one of the other recommendations in the report, what I haven't spoken of, is when the original, the original design of charter schools was to free up, uh, free up the teaching staff inside of a school from bureaucracy that, so that it could be innovative with the students. But the part that we're missing now in the current system is that that innovation was supposed to be then transferred over to the public schools in the neighborhood. And that's a piece that, we've so, that has been forgotten. And it is something that we feel very strongly about. Because teachers, you know, teacher voice is so important. And teacher innovation, when they're allowed to do things, can be so important in terms of reform and progress for all children. I will not pit one school against another, because there are children involved. And that's what we will always stand up for. I would now like to bring to the uh, podium uh, State Senator Eric Schneiderman. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, President Mulgrew and, and our colleagues uh, in government, I, I think, are making a very simple statement. I'm not here because I'm anti-charter school. I'm here because I'm for accountability, transparency, choice, fairness, the, the, the fact that Senator Sampson, our leader, spoke about. And we, the issue of what we're going to do with our New York's charter schools is on the table already. And I really want to commend the UFT for injecting into that debate a little bit of sanity about where we have to go. Uh, and I say to th there are people of good conscience who I meet all the time who are advocates for charter schools. The people who run good charter schools and want, really care about our kids should welcome this report. We have to listen to what we hear every day from the voters all across the state of New York. We want more accountability. We want more transparency. We want to make sure that every tax dollar is being used wisely. This is what we're hearing from one end of the state to the other. Charter schools are not exempt from those demands. My name is Lydia Belessen, and I'm a parent at a public school in uh, Brooklyn, Red Hook, PS15, the Patrick F. Daly Elementary School, where I serve as co-president of PTA. Um, I have three children enrolled in PS15 and we have been forced to co-locate with the charter school in our school. We are a triple-A school, three years in a row. And um, sharing the space is difficult. I also have a high school student enrolled in a charter school in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And in both cases, the charter school issue has been a negative one. In my child, um, my little uh, children's school in PS15, we have lost needed space for programs. We have to have adjusted our schedules and limited our um, time. Our specialist students have this year lost all their rooms for services, and they are currently being shuffled around the building because we have to accommodate our charter school growth. In my oldest son's case, um, we experienced abusive power by, our, by the principal there in um, threatening to take away his IEP and I had to use legal action to stop him and to make sure that his services are being met at the school. I would now like to bring up Assemblyman Alan Mizell, please. Over here, sorry. Thank you, thank you, uh, President Mulgrew. Uh, the issue of charter schools has been of great concern to me uh, for quite some time. We have to make sure that if you want to say that the charter schools are the best way of performing the educational function, you have to give those same advantages to the public schools, like small class sizes. If you don't have small class sizes in the public schools, but you have them in the charter schools, well, of course, parents are going to say, well, I want my kid to go to the school where there's smaller class sizes. It's not fair, it's not legitimate, and it's a fraud when you have private companies trying to make a buck off our children. So I'm glad that the UFT has, has seen this problem, my colleagues as well, and I'm going to do everything I can in Albany to make sure that this injustice is righted. Thank you. I would now like to bring up uh, Assemblyman Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Michael. Good afternoon. As you very well mentioned before, uh, we are not here to pit one school against another or one uh, 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 set of schools against another because they're both educating our kids. But it is appalling to see how some of these charter schools are being run by for-profit companies trying to make money off of our kids. That was never the original intent of the charter schools. It should not be now, 10 years down the road. Uh, we just want to make sure that both 
our public schools and our charter schools get the resources that they need so that our kids can benefit from it. I would now like to uh, bring up uh, State Senator Toby Stavisky. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it seems to me that charter schools should be picking up the slack and instead you've heard today they're cherry picking. That's what we used to call it, cherry picking. They're taking the higher flung fruit and what about the other kids? What about the other children who don't have the benefits, who perhaps English may not be their first language? They may have some uh, disabling problem. These are the kids who also deserve the education. So I thank the UFT for uh, bringing us together this morning. And I look forward to working with Michael and everyone else here. I would now like to bring up uh, Assembly Member Linda Rosenthal, and thank you very much for being here. Thank you. You know, as far as I know, um, charter schools get public funding, our money, yet all their information is secretly guarded. When you ask for information about who applies to the school, who gets chosen, who's in the school, who got kicked out of the school, um, the answer is we don't have to tell you. And I think uh, that, that provides um, safety for them and a kind of mystique that um, perpetuates the idea that charter schools are better than regular public schools. I think it's very important that before we race to change the cap or lift the cap, as everyone seems to be pushing us <coughs> to do, let's first find the facts before we give you even greater latitude to uh, do things your way. I'm not saying charter schools don't do things well at times. Public schools do too. But we need, we need fairness. And fairness can be gotten through transparency and it can be gotten through cooperation. Which some, so that's something that a lot of charter schools don't do. I'd now like to bring up Assemblyman Jose Peralta. We're not here to pit one school versus another. We're not here to talk about um, whether charter schools are working or they're not. We're here to level the playing field. We're here to make sure that if the public school system and the public schools have an opportunity to take ELL students, then why not the charter schools? Why don't they take their fair amount of, of ELL students? We need to send that message to charter schools that there has to be an elimination of this disparity that exists today. There has to be an elimination of this disparity. There has to be transparency. There has to be accountability, or else we can't continue our discussions or else we can't move forward. And that's why we're here today, to stand in solidarity with the UFT, to stand in solidarity with parents, to stand in solidarity with all of you to say that these reforms must take place. And we're hoping that as we stand here on January 3rd, 2010, by January 3rd, 2011, we can have some success in those reforms. I'd li now like to bring up uh, Assemblyman Mike Benedetto. If before we, 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 we lift that cap, we want to see that there is a level ground here, that all schools can be evaluated equally with all the facts, uh, as open and as honest as we can get them. And we want to uh, look at that. And I, Mike, I congratulate you and, uh, and your staff for putting together this report because it's the beginning of a, a very, very important discussion. Well, another recommendation in our report is about the funding formula. There is currently a lag. And the teachers who we represent in unionized charter schools have pointed out that it's a real problem for them. So what we, the r report that we did really dug down into the funding formula, and it was clear to us that schools should be funded on a per pupil student need, and that, and that the lag should be eliminated. And I now have uh, Mr. Craig Garber, a teacher from the beginning in children, with children uh, charter school, and the chapter leader to come here to speak about that. Please come on up, Craig. Uh, every student in New York City, particularly those at risk, will benefit from changes that hopefully come from this. Uh, like President Mulgrew was just saying, related to this issue, funding should follow the student to the school that they're in. I was thinking about it as, you know, if we have the technology now to know what child is in what school and what their particular need is, whether it's special education or an English language learner, and that child receives a separate funding line, then why should that money not follow that student so that those resources can help them learn? And I think it's, it's fairly simple. I mean, this... This report and the changes that come from it will promote equity and fairness and across all New York State public schools, regardless if they're a district school or a charter school, they're all public schools. 